Okay, so we've been talking about position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs. And let's uh, start with a position versus time graph just like we did in our homework assignment. And if you look at the slope of this position versus time graph, it goes up one meter for every one second. So, and it's doing that the same all the way throughout. And so it has a consistent and constant slope showing a consistent and constant velocity. So we have uh, right here at one meter per second uh, what the velocity is. So these two graphs tell us the same story of how an object is moving. Um, the position versus time graph tells us it's moving forward at a constant velocity of one meter per second. If we look at the velocity graph, it tells us the same thing. We know that it's moving forward because it, it has a positive velocity. It's above zero. And we knew that it's a, know that it's a constant velocity because the velocity remains unchanged. So it really tells us the same story. It's just two different types of representations. Um, from each representation, then, we should be able to define or find displacement. Now, just to remind you, we talked about the fact that displacement means change in position. So how much an object changes position. And our shorthand notation for this is uh, delta x. So that triangle, remember, means change in. So change triangle x means change in position. So we should be able to find both of those, like the displacement, from each graph. So the easiest one is just to look at the position graph. If we look at the beginning, it looks it starts at a position of zero meters, and it finishes after a total of six seconds. Its final position up here is six meters. So the change in position is six, and it moved up six meters. It did not move down six meters, and so the overall displacement, looking at the position graph, is positive six meters. Now, if the velocity graph really tells us the same story, that means we should also look at, be able to look at the velocity graph and find the displacement. Somehow we should be able to get six meters away from looking at the velocity graph. Now, there's two ways to go about it. Um, most students look at that and say, well, I know, my mouse go. There it is, okay. I know that it's moving with a velocity of one meter per second. So every second that it moves, it's moving forward one meter. And I know it's, it's moving one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. So it must have gone forward a total of six meters. Okay. With these simple numbers, like you can kind of reason through what that will look like. The other way to kind of do that more formally is if you shade in this region between the velocity line and the zero axis, it makes a rectangle. right? And if you want to find the area of any rectangle, you basically have one dimension multiplied by the other dimension. So let's say we take our height times our width. So to find the area of this rectangle, we take the height. So the height is goes from 0 to 1. The height is 1 meter per second. And the width of our rectangle is 6 seconds. You have to have the numbers and the units. So if I take height times width, 1 meter per second, times six seconds, we end up with just six meters. So one times six is six. If we look at the units, we have meters divided by seconds times seconds. So we have a seconds on the top, we have a seconds on the bottom of a fraction, and we can actually cancel out the seconds, so we're only left over with the units of meters. Okay. So I guess the more formal way of, of finding the displacement of the object just by looking at our velocity versus time graph is this. You guys can write this down. Is the area between the velocity line and the zero axis. So it's that blue shaded region right here. This is the area between the velocity line, our line at one meter per second, and the zero position on our velocity axis. So I'll give you just a minute to write that down. In a little bit, we're going to look at another situation just to make sure that this, this technique of finding the displacement by shading in that area and calculating it like that also works for different situations. Okay. 
So our second situation, we're again going to have a position versus time graph, and we're going to draw the velocity versus time graph. So we have something that starts at a position of zero meters in a total of three seconds. It goes up to a position of three meters. And then over the remaining three seconds, it goes back down to a final position of one meter. So let's make our velocity versus time graph first. Um, the slope of this line, we'll call that region A, is one meter for each second. So our velocity graph shows a constant flat line at positive one meter per second. And for the second region, or region B, it's going down one meter every second. So our velocity has to be at a position or velocity graph of negative one meter per second. Okay. So if we look at the displacement, again, we should be able to find out its overall change in position or its <coughs> overall displacement by looking at either the position versus time graph or the velocity versus time graph. So let's do the easy one first. If we look at our position versus time graph, it starts at zero meters, and in the very end, its overall displacement, it starts at zero and it ends at zero, so the overall displacement is just zero meters. It was moving, but when we look at the beginning, we look at the end, it didn't move overall, so it was overall displaced nowhere, zero meters. Well, if that's the case, we should be able to look at the velocity versus time graph and it should tell us the exact same story. So if we look at the area under the first part of the line, that is one meter per second times a total of three seconds gives us a displacement or an area of plus three meters. And if we kind of shade in the region between the velocity line and the zero axis, which is now above our velocity line, our height is goes from zero to negative one, so it's negative one meter per second. Multiplied by our width of three seconds, we get a displacement of negative three meters. So if we want to find out what the total displacement is of something, and it's moving two different times, oops, we have to add displacement number one to displacement number two. Well, in the, be the beginning, the first three seconds it moved forward three meters, and we have to add to that displacement number two, which is negative three meters. We can see that even when we're looking at the velocity versus time graph, that the overall displacement or the overall change in position of our object, whatever was moving to make that graph, is still zero. So it still works. So finding the area of a velocity versus time graph still gives us displacement whether we're moving forwards or backwards or doing different things.